Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are in their spacesuits, investigating a gigantic six-wheeled atomic digging machine on the planet Mercury. As they walk across the deeply cracked ground in 300-degree heat, the huge machine starts moving toward them with increasing speed. They're trying to run us down with the machine, Commander. Get to the ship, Happy. It's hard to run in these bulky suits. Maybe we can dodge the driller. Don't try it. The driller's big, but it can turn like a cat. It's gaining on us. Don't look back. Run. Hey! Quick, Happy, on your feet. My foot caught the crevice. Give me your hand. No, you sir. I can't get loose. I'm caught. Commander, get away. Please, while you can. The driller's almost on top of us. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The City of the Sun. Hey, gang, listen to this poor old rocket ship here at the Lunar Fleet Base. You know what the trouble is? That rocket's trying to run on ordinary fuel. Now, here's that same rocket ship loaded with super fuel. Now, that's what I call a real blast off. And boys and girls, to get a bright and snappy start, you need super fuel too, especially in the morning. So start your day with a breakfast that supercharges you. A nourishing breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal, like Rice Checks. Triple crisp Rice Checks. Triple crisp because it's toasted three times. And oh boy, is Rice Checks delicious. Makes breakfast sparkle, that's how good it is. Rice Checks. Golden shredded rice biscuits in that modern bite-sized design for easy eating. So remember, gang, to start off bright and snappy in the morning, eat a nourishing breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal and get supercharged. Today, try your spoon out on Rice Checks. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are on the planet Mercury, organizing space patrol units into a search for Professor Mallison, whose spaceship vanished on the dark side of the planet. But now, a second emergency on another part of Mercury sends Buzz and Happy racing to the hot side of the tiny planet to Solaria, the city of the sun. Who's behind the sabotage, sir? I don't know, Happy. So we've got to find out. But I've got a pretty good idea what the motive is. What's that, sir? Solaria has suddenly become very important because of the mineral deposits that have been found about 60 miles south of the city. South? That means it's hotter than the Solaria area. Well, how do they work it? With robot-controlled mining equipment operated from Solaria. And with spacesuits, a few technicians can work in two-hour shifts on the mining site itself. Oh, and whoever sabotaged the power plant doesn't want those mining operations to continue. Yeah, and probably cuts into their own source of revenue. Well, I suppose this is more important, but... I sure would have liked to locate Professor Mallison first. We've got the search units well organized, Happy. They'll comb the entire dark side of Mercury with infrared viewscope scanners. Well, do you think the professor could still be alive, sir? Mm, he's been missing over four days. That would be a long time to hold out in sub-zero temperature on the dark side of the planet. Well, how about the spacephone signal picked up yesterday, though? That, that was from Mallison, wasn't it? Mm, it was his code, all right. But it was an automatic signal. It could have been sent from one of the small rockets Mallison had aboard his ship. When released, it automatically sends back information on cosmic radiation, temperature, and Mercury's own magnetic field. Oh, that's what Mallison was studying? Yes. Even if we locate the rocket, it wouldn't mean it's anywhere near Mallison's ship. A commercial spaceship picked the signal up briefly just for a few seconds. All they got was Mallison's identification code and the temperature. 122 degrees below zero. Yeah, which could mean that Mallison released the rocket several days ago and it landed on the dark side of the planet. Right. Commander... What's that? It looks like steam shooting out of the ground down there. Looks like a geyser. Geyser on the hot side of Mercury? Happy, check our exact position. I don't like the looks of this. Yes, sir. I'll call Solaria Space Control. Corey and Terra 5 to Space Control Solaria. Corey and Terra 5 to Space Control Solaria. Space Control Solaria to Commander Corey. Lieutenant Orris here. Lieutenant, I'm flying low northeast of Solaria. My cadet and I have sighted something that looks like steam shooting out of the ground. Steam, Commander? Yes, I'll give you our position. Check it against the location of water conduits leading to the city. Yes, sir. Happy got the data? Yes, sir. We're 10 degrees, 27 minutes, 48 seconds south by 112 degrees, 51 minutes, 08 seconds east. Got that, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. I'll check it against the chart. 
Commander, do you suppose it is a broken conduit? I don't know what else it could be, Happy. Possibly a quake broke the pipe. Commander, it looks like a broken conduit, all right. Solaria's main water supply line runs right through that point from melting and pumping station number three on the cold side of Mercury. Better check with Solaria water control. See if they've noticed a drop in pressure. Yes, sir. Thanks for telling us. If that's a bad break, we'll be in a tough spot here. Is there a seismograph in Solarium? I believe there is, sir. I suggest you check the city engineering office. Have them contact other cities on the planet and see if there's been a quake in this area. Yes, Commander. We'll circle this vicinity to see if any further trouble develops. Report back when you get the information. Corey out. Well, from the looks of that ground down there, sir, they must have a lot of quakes in this region. You mean those deep cracks? Well, those were formed millions of years ago, Happy, when Mercury first began to dry out under the terrific heat. Yeah, but with one side of the planet covered with ice and the other side with blistering heat, well, wouldn't there be a lot of quakes? Well, as far as I know, there hasn't been a serious one reported in recent years. We'll keep circling till we hear from Solaria. Can we take it easy, Burdock? This is pretty rough ground. Well, these atomic drillers weren't made for comfort, bro. And I want to get plenty of distance between us and that broken water conduit. We're going 70 with this thing. If we hit one of those cracks at the speed, we'll tip open. Just quit worrying. We're riding on six wheels. And each of them are 20 feet in diameter. And every wheel has its own power drive. I think we're in more danger of being spotted by a space patrol ship than we are of upsetting this monster. What do we do with the driller when we get to our spaceship? We just leave it. It's pretty well camouflaged to blend in with this cracked yellow ground here. We can find it again if we need it. You aren't planning to drill any more holes in the Solaria water supply, are you? No, uh, not right away. But this job will cause plenty of trouble. You think they'll be able to repair it? Probably. But with things like this happening, trouble with power and water... The rival companies are going to think twice about using Solari as a base of operations. Hey, Burdock, watch it! Nearly tipped us off. Oh, well, we just relax, Joe. We're almost to the ship. Well, sir, it looks like the conduit broke in just in one place. Uh, it's lucky, but even at that, it'll take several hours to get many equipment out here to repair it. Space Control Solaria calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Corey here. Go ahead, Lieutenant. A maintenance crew is getting ready to leave Solaria now, Commander. They know the location. Oh, good. We'll head for Solaria. What about the seismograph reports? No quakes have been detected anywhere on Mercury, sir. The chief engineer doesn't understand how that conduit could have broken. How's your water supply? Pressure has dropped to less than a quarter of normal, sir. We're already on a strict water rationing. Nearly all industries have been ordered to shut down for 24 hours. Will it take that long to repair the damage? At least. Oh, uh, Commander... Colonel Henderson thought you might be interested in a report on Professor Mallison. Well, yes, I am. Have they found him? No, sir. But another automatic signal was picked up by a cargo ship, apparently from a grounded instrument rocket. It isn't much help. What do you mean? It's sending inaccurate information. The cargo ship pilot got a rough fix before the signal stopped. It's on the hot side of Mercury, but the temperature data was 122 degrees below zero. Same as the other report. The sending mechanism must have been damaged when the rocket landed. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, Lieutenant. I'll contact you when we reach Solaria. Corey out. All right, Happy. Get on vector for Solaria. Yes, sir. Hey, wait a minute. Look down there on the ground. What is it, Commander? See those gouges? A sort of crisscross pattern. Yeah, two rows of them. They're tracks. What would make tracks that far apart? Some heavy earth-moving machinery, probably. Oh, from when the conduit was laid. Uh, I don't think so. Focus the viewscope toward the steam spout. Yeah, see? Tracks end right near the place where the break is. Say, that's right. Follow those tracks in the other direction, Happy. Hey, they lead away from Solaria. That makes them interesting. Any surface equipment out here would be more likely to come from Solaria than anywhere else. We're going to find out where those tracks lead. Just a few minutes more, Grove. Our ship's on the other side of the jagged view. Well, she'll be glad to get out of this villa. You're mighty peculiar, aren't you? You don't like spaceships either. Who says I don't? Well, didn't you get space sick the other day? Well, or was it because I shot down that lab ship? You shouldn't have done that, Burdock. He wasn't bothering us. It was on some scientific mission. Well, it's just too bad. He came snooping around just as we blasted off from our hideout. We didn't have a chance. Don't be so squeamy. By acting quickly, we probably kept the space patrol from spotting us near the power relay station. And what's the matter? Reduce it's a ship. Yeah. It's flying low, right toward us. You think they see us? I don't know. Hey, why'd you stop the driller? Because if we're moving, they might spot us. But with the sides and top of the drill camouflage, they might not notice. Well, they went right.
right over. It's a space patrol ship. They must have spotted the break in the water line. Yeah, but why were they going so slow? How do I know? Well, just sit tight and see what they're up to. Happy, look down there. The tracks stop. That's hard to tell. The, the ground must be packed almost as hard as concrete in some places. I'll circle back. Use the viewscope scanner. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Hey, there is something down there. A hump of something. A small hill, maybe. Now, look closer. Did you ever see a hill on wheels? Yeah, I can see it now. It's a big piece of machinery. And it's camouflaged. Happy, get our spacesuits out of the locker. I'm setting the ship down. Yes, sir. Check the refrigeration units in the suits carefully. We're going to be walking around an oven temperature down there. They must have seen us. Why would they land their ship clear out here? Just take it easy, Grove. We're safe in the driller. Nobody could get in unless we opened the door. Somebody's getting out of the ship. Two men. Yeah. Hey, that's Terra 5. Come into Corey's ship. If we don't open up, Corey will go back to his ship and report us. They'll send a crew out here with cutting torches. If Corey gets back to the ship, how can we stop him? We'll stop him all right. You just wait and see. Wow, now that we're on the ground, that machine looks enormous. It's an atomic driller, Happy. The camouflage covers the drill part, but it's built to cover the toughest kind of terrain and drill through solid rock. Yeah, then that's what happened to the water conduit. Drilling into the main would be simple for that machine. It looks that way. Have your gun ready, Happy. Whoever's in there probably won't be too eager to answer questions. Hey, Commander, it's moving. They're making a getaway. Get back to the ship, Happy. Yes, sir. Commander, it's coming toward us. Run, Happy. They're trying to run us down. It's trying to run in these bulky spacesuits. Maybe we can dodge the driller. Don't try it unless you have to. That driller's big, but it can turn like a cat. The, gr- the ground's so full of cracks and ditches. Commander, it's gaining on us. Don't look back. Run. Hey. Half on your feet, quick. My foot's caught in the crevice. Hey, give me your hand. Run for it, Commander. They can't get both of us. You've got to get away. No, give me your hand, Half. No, you, sir. I'm caught. Commander, look out. The driller's right on top of us. You've got to leave me. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Shh. Space Patrol or Dick Tufeld, gang. I've got a secret for you. Wait till I close the door. Okay? Now, here's a secret Buzz Corey wants you to know about. The secret of how Space Patrollers get a rip-roaring start in the morning. Now, here's what they do. They eat a breakfast that supercharges them. A good breakfast with one of the three checkerboard super cereals. Rice Chex, Wheat Chex, and Instant Ralston. Chex, they're the super cereals with that modern bite-sized design. The cereals with a swell new taste you'll like right off the reel. And to warm up your motor, there's Instant Ralston, the hot super cereal. Has a heart of the wheat flavor that you'll really warm up to. So now you know how space patrollers get that rip-roaring morning start. Get a flying start yourself every morning, gang. Sit down to a nourishing breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal and get supercharged. Rice checks, wheat checks, good hot Ralston, the super cereal. Flying low above the hot side of the planet Mercury, Buzz and Happy have sighted a gigantic atomic drilling machine. The driller is driven by Burdick and Grouff, who have bored a hole in the water conduit leading to Solaria, a city in the sun-baked Mercury desert. Buzz and Happy don spacesuits to investigate a cleverly camouflaged drilling machine. Suddenly, the driller started up, rolling across the cracked and fissured earth on its six giant wheels. Happy caught his foot in a large crack in the ground. And now, as Buzz tries to pull Happy free, the enormous driller roars down upon them. It's no use, sir. It's still right after us. It's going to crash us. Fall flat. Dive into that crevice quickly. Yes. Happy, are you all right? I guess so, sir. I'm half buried in the dirt. Uh, don't move yet. Stay down in the crevice until the driller's out of sight. We don't want them coming back to finish the job. I sure thought we were goners when that big thing thundered over us. We were lucky to find the crevice deep enough. They're still going, I guess. Yeah. Fortunately, they didn't stop to wreck our ship. That means they're sure they crushed us under the wheels. The driller's completely out of sight now, sir. All right, into the ship, Happy. We won't take time to get out of these suits till after we blast off and start our search for that drilling machine. Yeah. 
Well, here we are. Here's your space suit, Murdoch. Get into it. Let's get to the ship. Mm, I see you're all ready. Yeah, all but the face piece. You know, sometimes I get the impression you don't enjoy riding in a driller. What the funny stuff. Let's get out of here. How do we know Corey didn't send a space phone message before he got out of his ship? You're right, Grove. But before we leave, I'm going to set a magnesium bomb and leave it in here. What for? I'll make sure that this drill is useless to anybody else. And it'll leave this cab in such a mess that the space patrol can't find any fingerprints. All right. All right, but let's get at it. There's something up ahead, sir. Looks like smoke. You're right, Happy. It's the drilling machine that's on fire. It's not moving. Hey, do you suppose whoever was in it got out? Well, let's hope so. Uh, wait a minute. By the color of the smoke, that must be magnesium. It must have been deliberately started to wreck the control mechanism. But where's the driver? Uh, take a look at that scorched area on the ground a few yards from the driller. A blast-off scar. Uh-huh. Our driller operator had a spaceship hidden here. Turn on the view scope, Happy. Maybe you can pick up a trace of him. Now contact Space Control Solaria. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling Space Control Solaria. Commander Corey calling Space Control Solaria. This is Space Control Solaria, Commander. Lieutenant R.S. speaking. Lieutenant, relay this bulletin to all Mercury Space Patrol units. Yes, sir. A spaceship of unknown type just blasted off from the vicinity of the broken water conduit. Interrogate all space-borne private craft. Ground all suspicious ships and hold the occupants. I'll relay that message, Commander. Can you give any sort of description of the ship? No, we merely saw the blast-off scar. Looked like it was from a small space cruiser. That water main break was deliberately sabotaged. An atomic driller did the job. Atomic driller? Yes. We found it abandoned near the break. Tell Colonel Henderson I want investigators sent out to examine it. They'll need firefighting equipment. Yes, sir. Make an immediate check of all known atomic drilling machines on Mercury. Where they are and who has them. Yes, Commander. How's the water situation in Solaria? It's even more serious than we thought, sir. We're setting up cargo ships to bring some in from other cities. Oh, uh, Commander... A Venus bond passenger ship reported seeing a wrecked lamp ship south of Solaria. The pilot thought it might be Professor Mallison's ship. South of Solaria? How far south? Fifteen D.O., sir. That's the hottest part of the planet. Even if the ship wasn't badly damaged by the crash, it looks bad for Mallison. The same passenger ship also picked up Mallison's automatic coat, sir. And another temperature report. 122 degrees below zero. Below zero? That seems impossible. Have you sent any units to investigate... Not yet, sir. Colonel Henderson... Uh, Yes, I know. You've got problems of your own, Lieutenant. Give me the location of that crashed ship. I'll investigate it myself. And 87 degrees, 16 minutes, 43 seconds west. But I I suppose that's the ship you shot down. Shut up, Inverness. I got their frequency spoke of. Got it, Lieutenant. One more thing, Commander. The passenger ship pilot isn't sure, but he thought he saw something moving near the crashed ship. It doesn't seem likely. No, it doesn't. I'll get there as quickly as I can. Corey out. Corey alive? Yeah. It was somebody else we ran over with the drill. Cut it off. That is the first ship you shot down, and there's someone still alive. There couldn't be. That was four days ago. And even in the best space suit made, nobody could live four days in that heat. What are we going to do? We're going to make sure. Maybe we can get there before Corey does. And if not, we'll cut Corey's investigation short. Murdoch, maybe we didn't kill those men with the driller. Maybe it was Corey and somebody else, and they escaped somehow. Well, if he did, he wouldn't escape this time. You marked down those coordinates, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, they're right here. All right. I'll take the controls. You get on the view scope. We don't want to get close to another ship, especially Corey's. We're nearly to the location, sir. Drop her down a few thousand feet, Hap. Yes, sir. Yeah, this part of Mercury looks even worse than where we were before. Rougher terrain. Yes, and it's even hotter. Close to 500 degrees. Now, listen. Get that down, Hap. Yes, sir. M-L-S-28. Mercury Lab Ship 28. That's Mallison's identification code. Temperature minus 122 degrees. Hey, it cut out. Minus 122 degrees. I got a fix in that signal, Happy. It's almost directly below us. Look. It's a cracked up ship, all right. A lab job, too. Get your spacesuit on, Happy. Yes, sir. Whatever we do, we've got to do it fast. Hey, Commander, down there by that cliff, it's a man in a spacesuit. That's incredible. He's waving to us. Stand by for repeller ray. That's the lab ship, all right. Even in the view scope, you can see it's pretty badly smashed up. Yeah, but we're too late. Corey's ship is landing right near it. What do we do? We'll probably go in to find what's left of Mellison. When he does, we'll swoop down and bless the wreckage. And then shoot up Terrify. Better not get so low, Burdock. They may see us. There is 
not much they can do about it. Anyway, I'm keeping between them and the sun. Nobody's going to look up at the sun, especially here on Mercury. Wait a minute. They're running right past the ship. Where are they going? Oh, maybe. Seeing something close to the cliff. But I... It's a man. And he's alive. After four days in the blessed furnace down there. It's impossible. See for yourself. Uh, must be Mellis. We've got to make sure that none of them get out of here. Get your space suit on, Grove. We are going to land. Not unless we have to. But I'm going to make sure that all three of them are finished before we leave here. Check your suit spacer phone, Happy. That's working okay, sir. And so's the temperature control. And we'll need it. All right, open the outer hatch. Allison's acting pretty strange, sir. He just stands over there and motions to us instead of coming toward us. It's hardly a normal way to greet rescuers. Let's see if the spacesuit transmitter is working. Professor Mallison, this is Commander Corey. Can you read me? He's just waving more excited than ever. Professor, if you hear me, hold both hands over your head. He's doing it. Apparently he can hear us, but his transmitter's out. I thought I heard something in the earphones just for a second and another voice. Professor, is there some reason why you want us to come over there? If there is, hold your hands straight out at your sides. Yeah, that's what he wants us to do. We better do as he asks. How did he manage to survive in this heat? Commander, it's a cave. Yeah, I see. Commander, can you hear me now? Oh, yes, Professor. My spacephone wasn't working, so I couldn't answer you. Commander, you've got to look at this. It's a happy surprise to find you alive, Professor. That spacesuit must be remarkably resistant to heat. It isn't the suit that's responsible. Just look in here, where the beam from my atomo light is shining. It just looks like an ordinary cave. Further back, look at the walls. You mean that shiny blue-black mineral? Commander, that's ice. Ice? Ice. In this part of Mercury? Right. Thousands of tons of it, perhaps millions. And that's how you manage to stay alive. It's cool in the cave. Yes, with 570 degrees outside, inside it's a constant 122 below zero. And your automatic rocket transmitter was right. Commander, do you realize what this underground ice means to Mercury? To the people of Solaria in particular? You mentioned millions of tons. A conservative estimate. Think how easily it could be melted and piped to Solaria. Only a matter of a few miles in comparison with the present haul of more than a thousand. It certainly is a timely discovery. Dozens of conduits can be built from here to Solaria at a fraction of the cost of the one line that was broken. A spaceship? Yeah, it must be a space patrol craft. Let's get to our ship, Professor. Believe me, this news will be welcome in Solaria. Well, what I don't understand is how all this ice could be underground in the hot part of Mercury. The rock above insulates it. This is not a new phenomenon by any means. Why, on the planet Earth, more than a thousand years ago, Indians in the Arizona desert used to get ice from a natural cavern such as this. Hey, wait a minute. That's not a space patrol ship. It's a private cruiser. You're right, sir. It's taxiing around on repeller ray. I've seen that ship before. Why, it's the one that shot my lab ship down. Are you sure? I'm positive. Hey, what's a crazy fool doing? He's backing the ship right toward the cave. You better get out of here or he'll run over us. He's got something worse than that in mind. He's seen us and doesn't want us to get out. Well, maybe he's just backing up to get room to blast off between here and the opposite wall of the canyon. Up in your life. Quickly, get out of the cave. He's going to put his stern in here and turn on his rocket blast. It's lucky we saw him in time to get out of the cave. Now get behind this rock. Maybe he won't see us from the ship. You're right, Commander. He's pushing the tail of his ship back in the cave with blasts from his forward rocket. He intends to see that we don't get away from here. But keep close to the rock. I think we'll be safe here. Hey. He's keeping his forward rockets on to hold the ship in the cave. Something tells me he's going to regret this. Wow. The ship's wrecked. He shot right across the canyon into the opposite wall. His hand must have slipped off the controls. No, Happy. The heat from his rocket exhaust turned the ice into steam, and it popped the ship out of the cave like a cork. We'd better get over there, Commander. They may be badly hurt. If they haven't got spacesuits on, they haven't a chance. Commander, I see somebody getting out. Yeah, there are two of them. And they do have spacesuits on. Let's get them. By their attitude, I don't think we'll have any trouble. No, sir. You know, uh, during the last few minutes, sir, I, I really realized what a wonderful thing water is. That's so? Yes, sir. In the form of ice, it saved Professor Mallison's life. And when those two fellows turned it into steam, it uh, simply cooked their goose. <laughs> <laughs> An exciting preview of next week's new Space Patrol adventure after this important question. Have you sent for your Space Patrol space phone yet? You better hurry! hurry.
Yes, sir, this sensational offer is soon going to end. And you don't want to be left without one of these thrilling new spaceophone sets, do you? No, siree. So, hurry! Hurry! More fun. You can talk back and forth on the spaceophone to someone a straight 50 feet away. Just like talking on the telephone. Complete with two spaceophones, 50 feet of communication cord, and secret briefing sheet. Now remember, these are official spaceophones, made especially for you on Earth. Real beauties, too. Gleaming blue and yellow plastic. Look exactly like the spaceophones Buzz Corey and the gang use. So don't wait a single day. Hurry! Hurry! Yes, sir, you have to hurry, because this offer soon comes to an end. To get the complete Space Patrol Spaceophone set, do this. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in continental U.S. and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Missouri. And now for a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy have just entered a spaceship in Neptune City's spaceport in search of a traitor against the United Planets. They pause in the open hatch a moment. He may be up forward tampering with the controls. Wrong guess, gentlemen. Commander, look out! Here we are, cadet. I've got a ray gun. Yeah, well, I've got a... I warned you. Oh. Cardo, put down that gun. Don't try to get to your feet, Commander. What are you doing in this ship? Preparing it for its last voyage. <laughs> There's an explosive hidden aboard. Time to go off two hours after blastoff. And you, my friend, <laughs> will be aboard. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Queen of Space. Boys and girls, this is your commander. Do you know how life-giving oxygen is carried to the cells of the body? By the bloodstream. So when a person loses a great deal of blood in an accident or in sickness, there's not enough blood left to do that job. Result? The person dies. So, will you help me save lives by joining the Space Patrol Blood Boosters? It's fun, it's patriotic. So join the Space Patrol Blood Boosters today. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.